Thank you. Mr Nuttall, one minute, please. OK. Um, mobile phones, phone chargers, PlayStations, cameras, saunas, thermometers, refrigerators, freezers, toasters, kettles, microwaves, irons, air fresheners, clocks, watches, electric toothbrushes, DVD players, vacuum cleaners, children's toys, video games, medical devices, televisions, remote controls, calculators, heaters, tumble dryers and washing machines. Well, that's just to name a few, because all of these appliances and many, many more will undoubtedly rise in price as a result of this waste directive. And to think that the European Union is prepared to pile this legislation on just at a time when we're in the depths of a recession and when people are struggling to make ends meet. I therefore encourage everyone in this chamber to show sympathy with the hard-working taxpayers and with small to medium-sized businesses and put this prospective law in the waste bin. Thank you. With, with Mr Nuttall, will he accept, tell us, he's told us that the requirement that we recycle electrical waste puts up the price of the products. If the producer doesn't have to pay for that, then who does have to pay for the disposal of those products? Why is he so against the council taxpayers, the ratepayers, the local governments across Europe, in our own country and elsewhere, who have to pay the burden of dealing with this waste, which he says the producer should not have to pay? I too enjoy our jousts and we do it on, it seems to be every speech that I give, we have these little, uh, these little jousts. Look, you know as well as I do where the cost will lie and it will end up with the taxpayer having to fund this. And what I'm saying is, is that at the moment we are in the depths of a recession, a recession like we haven't seen since the 1930s. And what I'm standing up for are the hard working taxpayers. And secondly, the real point here is that this should be done at national level by people, by politicians who are accountable to the electorate, not by a commission that meets in secret and is accountable to nobody. That is the key. I think Mr Florence, what, you've got a blue card too, sir. Thank you very much. Yes, I would like to call the Honourable Member by name, but I don't know his name. But in this debate about electronic waste, this is a kind of thing I've never experienced before. But anyway, which question... How would you answer the question of the citizens if in five or six years' time we establish that we've run out of raw materials and that they are lying around somewhere in the waste tip or in the water... Now, read the directive. It doesn't say a single word about the taxpayer having to stump up for this. Here, we're trying to tighten up the rules. And I would really appreciate your reply to the two points I've raised. Where, where the cost will end up. And it always does. It doesn't necessarily have to say it in the directive, because it never does. You never tell people that you're going to put up tax. You never tell people that you're going to hit them in the pockets. I mean, my country, for example, it costs us £50 million a day to be members of this club. The key, the key to all of this is, and I go back to exactly what I said to Chris, decisions should be made at a na nation-state level by politicians who are accountable to the electorate. No, not, the electorate of my country, of Great Britain, cannot remove commissioners. That is fundamentally undemocratic and it is wrong. Grazie, la parola all'onorevole. Thank you.